Hey guys, um, it's Heather, it's Heather. No, sorry, I don't have my name behind me. It's because we're in my kitchen. We're in my kitchen and I want to play with some stuff. I'm probably going to mess up because these things that I'm going to try today, I've never made. So my goal today is to make seed crackers. Um, I want to make a, like a cherry cake, super easy, like a boxed cake, but like just stay with me. And then I want to do that one ice cream where you use cottage cheese and cocoa. You blend it together and then you freeze it and it's supposed to be like chocolate ice cream, but healthy for you. I know. So we got a couple of healthy things and then we got our naughty thing in there with the, the cherry cake. So I assume we're going to make some mistakes, but hey, that's what that, that's what's, uh, makes it fun, right? Anyway. All right, guys, let's get into it. I'm on the hunt for a, um, like a low carb or carb free, high protein snack, because I'm telling you my, <laughs> my weakness is carbs. I'm telling you, I love me some carbs, <laughs> carbs and sugar, right? It's a problem for me. I love crunchy. I love grabbing the, a row of crackers. I'm telling you, I will devour and destroy a row of crackers. Like give it to me and it, just say goodbye. I ain't sharing. That whole row is mine. So that's my weakness. I've got like dozens and dozens. <laughs> I'm telling you dozens of New Year's resolutions. Hopefully like six of them will stick. So that's the method to the madness. Do a whole bunch and then hopefully at least some of them will stick. But anyway, so when I was at Trader Joe's, seed and grain um, crisp bread. It's a Norwegian cracker. Um, I'm telling you, this stuff is so friggin' good. You get like 10 of these little um, the Norwegian crackers, uh, crisp crisp bread, crisp crackers, seed crackers, whatever you want to call them. Um, I fell in love with these. I did not buy the gluten-free ones. They were twice as much. They're putting less product in the thing. So why does it cost more? Hmm. If I can get a good cracker that is just seeds, it satisfies that need for me to have like crunch and salt. And then I can indulge on it and I don't need to worry about the carb part. So I want to see some people when they're making these seed crackers, they'll put oats in there or flour. Um, we're going to not do oats and flour because my goal is to get away from carbs and this is carbs. So we're, we're doing sesame seeds, raw sunflower seeds, raw pumpkin seeds. And then this is your binder. Apparently this is what makes like the crackers stick together so it's not just a bunch of seeds rolling around on the cookie sheet. So flax seeds and chia seeds. Now I've seen some people throw in a little cornstarch or just a little bit of baking powder or, but then I've seen people that don't put it on there. So I'm kind of thinking we're gonna try it without. Oh, you need a little bit of oil too. So I'll go through all of that little the steps um, hold on. But anyway, so I went to the, the local Walmart. I went to the local Walmart and I picked up these. I'm telling you guys, these also satisfy your, that salty crunchy and all it is is cheese. You can make your own too. I mean, you just put cheese on a cookie sheet and bake it until it's crispy, right? They're like this. And they're like, crunchy and right I found these at Walmart go get these sorry I keep looking like here there here there whatever you're just guys are gonna have to just be okay with it when I look at myself I'm like looking over here so it doesn't even look like I'm looking at you I gotta try and look at the camera but if I'm looking at the camera then I can't tell if I'm in frame or not Anyway, um, so these are, they're oven baked parm crisps and they're, se they're everything seasoned. You got these, 
these are next level. This is, if you like that strong taste of, like if you guys are familiar with Trader Joe's everything, everything but the bagel sesame seasoning blend, if you guys are familiar with that, where you like that, that garlic salt sesame seed flavor, um, these you can get at Walmart. I don't mean to chew in your ear. They're so crispy. They got the cheddar and the Asiago pepper jack, ranch cheddar, plain Parmesan. But again, you can like make those on your own. So I'd like to try that at some point too, where we just make our own like crispy cheese crackers. But anyway, today we're doing seeds. See, I did it again. I'm looking like over here. Gonna look over here. Maybe I need more coffee. I don't know. I've never made this. So let's just get that clear. If I mess up, <laughs> that's why, because I've never made it. I wanted to do this with you guys. I wanted to share it with you. Okay. I wanted to do it for the first time with you guys. I'm gonna change the camera position so you guys can see what I'm doing, okay? So we do have our cookie sheet lined with parchment paper. I'm gonna do a third of a cup of sesame seeds. I'll put this all in the description of the video also. Do a, I'm gonna do a half a cup of flax seed. Now, I'm not sure if this needs to be ground up or not. That I'm not sure. We're gonna use whole flax seeds, half a cup of whole um, pumpkin seeds. Um, I've seen some people that take the bigger seeds and they blitz them in their blender or their processor just to kind of break them up or hit them with a, a chef's knife and just kind of chop them up a little bit. But I'm gonna leave them whole and we'll just, if we don't like it, we can always change it like next time. Half a cup of sunflower seeds raw. And then two tablespoons of our wonderful chia seeds. You guys have seen, I have a video on, under my shorts tab where I make a chia jam and it, it's to help it's to help keep the party moving because it's high in fiber. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I, I eat a little bit of chia jam every day because um, it's needed. Okay. All those little guys looking at me. The recipe I found does call for cornstarch. Um, there is, there are carbs in cornstarch. So I'm kind of thinking we don't need it because I've seen recipes where people put it in and then people that don't. We're gonna not put the the cornstarch in and we're gonna see like what happens. And if our crackers end up being uh, ridiculous, then uh, we'll put it back in. So then I've got three fourths of a cup of um, warm water. I guess apparently you can put whatever oil you want. Well, that's the one I'm using. Three and a half tablespoons of any oil. Give it a good stir. We haven't added any um, flour, cornstarch, um, oatmeal, no carbs. I just wanna try and see if I can make a good cracker with seeds, water, and oil. I've seen some people when they're making their seeds, they'll put it on top when it's cooking. I wanna put it in like in the mixture. So I'm gonna do a, a heaping tablespoon of um, that, Trader Joe's, everything but the bagel. You can literally do any seasoning. I might do another half. We'll just see how that is. And then we're gonna let it sit for at least 10 minutes so the chia seeds can absorb the water and um, make it our little paste so it's not all like watery and stuff. Okay, so it's been 10 minutes. Actually, it's been like 20 minutes, but um, the fact that I'm not gonna add flour or cornstarch to it, um, I think you need to add more of a binder. Um, so I did add a little extra um, chia seeds, which is the binder, and the flax seeds are the binder. But I, I wanna say in order for a flax seed to be a proper binder, it has to be ground up. So the next time I make that, I'm just gonna remember that to, to maybe blitz the, chia, the whole flax seeds 
so they're more um so they're open you know they're more of like a powder or like just broken up i'm, I'm not very good at explaining things okay you're just gonna trust me so anyway so that's what i did with this because after 10 minutes i went back and looked and it was still pretty um it was still pretty watery i think it was just another tablespoon of chia seeds that i ended up adding so i'll move the camera back down here so you guys can see what i'm doing so now it's like this like it, it sticks together so hopefully this will be enough and if not you know like we're gonna learn from this the oven is preheated to 275 that's Fahrenheit, 275 degree Fahrenheit, but you want it pretty thin. Flatten it out just like this, or putting a, another sheet of parchment on top and then rolling it out with your thing. So I think I'm gonna try that. You wanna get it as thin as you can. And I really hope it's going to stay binded that once we're done, it's not going to just crumble when we go to crack it. But um, we'll see, I don't know, because I'd kind of like to be able to do this without the added carbs. It's supposed to cook total of 90 minutes. So, but every 30 minutes, we're gonna rotate the pan in the oven like that. And then check it for crispiness Another 30 minutes, we're gonna rotate it like that. This looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna try just like this little piece. But what I think I'm gonna do for this other half of the seeds that we've got here, I think I'm gonna add something different in there where it's not so fragile because it does not take much to break it apart. But it tastes really good. I might just add a little bit of the cornstarch or I might blitz some of the flax seeds so we can get a better bind. I did add a little bit of cornstarch. I think next time I'm going to use um, flax seed powder for my binder. So um, we'll see how well this holds up. If you guys have made this, like I would love any advice. I'm just trying this for the first time. I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay, so now we've got our second batch of um, the Norwegian cracker, those seed crackers. They're seed crackers, okay? We got that second batch in the oven. So now I wanna show you guys something. I hope this works, okay? My husband, one of my husband's favorite um, pies is cherry pie. So there is this lemon cake that I make. Well, I don't, well, I do make it, but it's originally from his grandmother. And I actually did a short on how to make this lemon cake bars of hers. Um, so if you guys go in my shorts tab, you'll be able to see, um, just scroll down. It was a while ago that I did it. Moist lemon cake bars or something. I have no idea, but it's something to do with like Gigi and lemon. So go find that and watch it. So anyway, but basically what that is, is lemon cake mix, lemon pie filling, and four eggs. You mix it together, you put it like in a 13 by nine inch greased pan, and you bake it like 350 for maybe 20 minutes. And it's like the most moist, lemony, soft lemon cake. Okay, so I started wondering well, what if I did that whole, that Gigi's lemon cake, but with cherry pie filling and vanilla cake? Like mix it all together with the four eggs and then bake it in the oven. Like, would that be good? Cause we got chunks of cherries. Like the lemon is just soft. So how is that gonna be? Is it gonna be good? I don't know, so let's try it. <laughs> let's try it. Why is my thing like crooked? It keeps like moving. Oh, you guys, I swear. So I always wear these. I'm gonna grease the pan with some butter. So someone made a comment once like, those are so nasty and disgusting. The only reason why I wear like gloves when I'm handling like butter or especially like raw meat is because of my nails. Like if, 
you know, it gets under the grooves and the ridges. Sometimes I've got rhinestones, like, are my nails really clean when I go to touch the meat? Like, did I get it all off? Like, I don't know. So that's why I always wear, like, I put these gloves on to protect everybody from my the nastiness of my nails. You can spray your little glass pan with a nonstick spray. Um, I'm just gonna do a little bit of butter. Just kinda, I really hope this works. <laughs> oh, we'll see, right? Four eggs. I'm gonna give those eggs a little bit of a whisking. Pretty good, huh? <laughs> it smells like super, super good. Just like that, and then I'm gonna throw it in the oven for like 15 minutes and then we'll check it. Don't judge. Yeah, I know it has raw egg in it. I know. Now ask me if I care. Go ahead, ask. I don't care. <laughs> Ooh, she's looking good. It's puffing up really cute, but I did this for the toothpick in the center and um, we're not quite ready. We're still a little gooey. So I'm gonna do five more minutes and then we'll check it. So this cottage treat cheese ice cream. I have a family member, okay? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna rat this person out, but you know who you are. This person loves ice cream. Is ice cream always the best for us? No. We all know that. Cherry cake I'm cooking is not good for us. But the seed crackers, guys, hello, the seed crackers are good. That's right, we're making some changes, but I also don't want to make my life boring because I do love to eat, obviously. <laughs> Stop it, you know you do too. Cottage cheese ice cream, have you guys heard of this? So I wasn't able to find whole milk cottage cheese, that's what I wanted. I wanted to go for the higher fat, just it'd be more richer, more flavorful, closer to like a creamy rich ice cream. So this is 4%, I've never even heard of 4%. Heard of skim, 1%, 2% and whole. What the heck is 4%? I've never, I literally have never heard of that. If this goes kind of good, I'm gonna grab it and try it again with the whole milk. Okay, so we got our little blender. I'm gonna put this whole thing of cottage cheese in here. So this is a good way to increase your protein. And then you wanna do any kind of sweetener that you would like. Um, I'm gonna use honey. It kind of seems like that's kind of the, um, the the way to go I guess because then you don't have to worry about if you're using a brown sugar if you're if, if it's so it won't be grainy and gritty you want to make sure that your sugars dissolve so I guess that would be the only trick with that I would assume so we're gonna go ahead and go with honey I'm gonna use like a local honey um, I just always have used a local honey I heard it helps with like allergies a little bit of some honey. Now you add whatever flavor you want. You wanna add cocoa powder to make it chocolate. Um, I've got some like strawberries here, you know, white chocolate, butterfinger chunks. So I'm gonna do strawberries, which I did. These are frozen sliced strawberries. I thawed them cause I thought it would help a little bit better um, with blending them. So I'm just gonna throw that on there. There we go. I'm just gonna try it to see if we have enough sweetener in there. Do just a little bit more. See how like, it's just like silky smooth. Just spread it out. So we're gonna stick that in the freezer and we'll check back with it in an hour and a half. Okay, so this cherry cake actually ended up being pretty good. This is really, really good. So 
this kind of a cake, it, my lemon cake is just like that. It's super like airy and moist. It's super, super moist. But um, I thought this was really good. It's very tasty, very not overly sweet. So if you wanted it sweeter, you could do like that icing drizzle on top. It's so good, you guys. Little chunks of cherries here and there. Okay, so these seed crackers. This was our first batch. This is the second one. This has cornstarch in it. This one does not. So this did work. However, it's very fragile. It does break super easy. Like if you wanted to use this and like dip it into something, you're not gonna be able to. This one over here where I did just a little bit of cornstarch, I'm able to like pick up the whole thing and it, it keeps its shape. This one, I can't do that, like watch. I go to pick it up and it just starts to fall apart. Like it, it's very, it's very brittle and fragile. I like this one a little bit better when it's has more of a binder to it because when you chew it, it holds its shape a little bit better like a cracker. You bite into this and it just starts to crumble back into seeds. If you've made seed crackers before, I would love to hear any tips um, that maybe you guys might have. Well, let's grab something else to eat with it. Just a few more minutes and the ice cream will be ready, okay? So just settle down. Oh, and then one more thing with these seed crackers. I had seen online that keep them in like an airtight container on your counter for like up to three weeks. I think it'll keep, but honestly, like it's, it ain't gonna, they're gonna be gone within a few days, honestly. Like, right, let's be real. Maybe by the end of the day, I'm not sure, but it, it won't last long, okay? My husband came in the house and he was like, what is that? He's like putting his finger on it. He's like, is that bird food? Yep. Yeah, I cooked some bird food for the birds. Oh, it's for me. So I can slim down again and look the way I used to. <laughs> I used to be pretty thin. I did. I look pretty good. I'll leave all of the recipes, like everything will be down in the description. And then all these seeds I did get on Amazon. So I'll leave the link, but honestly, you can go buy them at your local grocery store, get them wherever you want, but I'll leave it down in the description just in case you wanna just click and buy. Okay, so the instructions I saw online, you're supposed to leave it in the, in the freezer for an hour and a half. I forgot, all right, so sue me. So it becomes like super, super hard, like an ice cube, like you're trying to chisel away. I left it in there overnight. So what I did is I just took it out of the, the freezer and I set it on the counter for, I don't know, it's been sitting over out here for like well over an hour to see if it'll just soften up because it was really, really hard. See, like it's even still like super hard. But, um, so I don't know if it's one of those things that you need to make and then you just leave it in your fridge. And then if you want to have some ice cream that night, you just throw it in your freezer, like while you're making dinner or something, and then you eat it an hour and a half later. So I, I don't recommend leaving it in your freezer for too long because it gets super, super hard, like rock hard. I would definitely recommend this. Are you fooling anyone? No. You know you're not eating ice cream, but man, it's so close. I'm definitely going to try this again with the whole milk, cottage cheese, or maybe adding just a little bit more strawberries to it. I would really do recommend trying this. It's super easy. Like if you guys are like, oh, I, I can't do it. No, yes, you can. Yes, you can. Try it. Um, next time I won't forget it in the freezer. You guys try it. Let me know if you've tried it. What flavors are you going to put on it? What flavors did you put on it? And um, I'm definitely, definitely doing this again. Just don't leave it in the freezer for 12 hours like I did. Don't do that.